All right, so last night I watched a bunch of films. Um, most of them were short films. One was a feature from a Cuban director. Her name was, was Sarah Gomez. Uh, she unfortunately died at the age of 30 in 1974 of an a asthma attack, which is, is horrible. She was Afro-Cuban, and she was the first woman to work within the... Um, Oh God, ICAIC, which is the uh, Cuban um, film, like, I don't know what it stands for, but it's the government uh, government film institute in Cuba, uh, which is pretty much the only way you can make films that got seen by anybody. Uh, so she made a whole bunch of films in the 60s, a bunch of short films on various subjects, and then she worked on this feature that was a combination of documentary uh, narr and narrative um, it was a slightly critical of the traditions that uh, have built Cuba, including up to the revolution, and and the critical of sort of some of the um, claims the revolution is going to help with. Unfortunately, she died in 1974, and the film wasn't released until 1977. Um, but it's quite good. So the films I watched were. Let me get to my list. I'm scrolling down. Uh, Fabrica de Tobacco, which obviously was a, a short documentary about tobacco and how um, cigars were made, basically. Then there was one called Plaza Vieja, which I believe was about Plaza Vieja, which is a market in Havana. A bunch of these were in Spanish without subtitles, and my Spanish is really limited, so um, I tried to follow along as best I could to the narration, but mostly I just watched. Um, so the other ones, these were all about parts, I think parts, uh, like um, geographical parts of um, Cuba. And, and as, a, as I could tell from the, the final film, which did have subtitles, she's very interested in the varying um, communities within Cuba and, and how they built the entire country as a, as a group. Um, so the other films were called Ilsa de Tesoro, Una Isla para Miguel, Ir a Santiago, uh, Y Tando Mo Sabor, and An de Otra Isla. The last one was 40 minutes long and had a bunch of interviews with women that I wish I could have understood better because um, they seemed like they had a lot to say and I could only understand every other sentence. Um, but the last film, which was called The Sieta Manera, or uh, any any which way, I think, um, is about a teacher who is a little frustrated with the system in um, post-revolution and trying to teach in a uh, part of Cuba that has traditionally been underfunded. Uh, and with, so with the revolution, the, basically there's a part at the beginning where they basically say that capitalism crushed these people and pushed them to the side and didn't give them jobs. and so now there's whole generations of people who are used to not working. And um, with the revolution in Cuba, now they've built homes for them and they've built schools for them and they're trying to bring them into the cog, and be, or bring them into the machine and be part of cogs in the machine um, that capitalism pushed them away from. But she's, having, she's finding it frustrating because there's, they have this tradition of not learning and so um, they have trouble staying in school and they have trouble um, focusing and they have trouble at home and they, cause they, you know, a lot of them are, are single mothers and so they have to have their mother and so doing that and school is, is finding difficult. She's just finding it really frustrating trying to figure out how to reach these kids. At the same time she meets uh, this guy who works in a bus factory who is frustrated working in the bus factory. He's frustrated with his life. He was one of these kids. He didn't make it to school. He dropped out. He couldn't handle it. Um, now he's frustrated with his where he's at in life, and he doesn't know how to... He's basically all the fears that she has, he is grown up, and, and they kind of fall in love, but they keep fighting because she's very liberal and liberated and, and has ideas about how to change things, and he's just so scared of everything and how to... and just wants happiness but doesn't know how to, how to reach for it because he's scared where he is, but he's afraid to leave where he is, and it was um, a very interesting way to critique the things that the revolution was supposed to help and how maybe it's not helping too too much. Um, so it was made in the 70s, but it was set in the early 60s. 
And I don't know enough really about Cuban history to um, see where it fits in terms of the Cuban film industry and um, just Cuban history in general. Um, but I believe that's, we're getting towards the, the great diaspora. Um, so I'm sur sure the, the teacher woman is the kind of woman who probably left to go um, to America and other places. Um, I read that a bunch of people left, Cubans left to Sweden, and I'm wondering how they even got to Sweden. Like, did they ride a boat across the entire Atlantic to Sweden, or did they ride to America and then take, like, a plane to Sweden? I've got a lot of questions. Um, these were great films. They were beautifully shot. She had a great eye with her camera, and I'm sort of sad. I mean, I got to watch, what is it, seven films, eight films by her, but I'm sort of sad that she only got to make the one feature, and she died so young because uh, she's clearly... A great talent in filmmaking and it would have been nice to have more films by her. Um, these are all on YouTube so if you can understand Spanish you can probably watch them and actually get everything from them. Um, but I highly recommend them. She's a great filmmaker. Her name is Sarah Gomez. She's Afro-Cuban. I don't even know how many other Afro-Cuban filmmakers there are, especially from the 60s and 70s. Not many I would assume. Um, so it's, a, it's definitely worth your time checking these these out. Uh, and a shout out to Monica Castillo for recommending this filmmaker to me. Uh, I would never have even heard of her without that, without that recommendation, so thank you.